Well, I mean, it's been, uh, I think it's been very rocky, obviously, the last couple of weeks. And I think equity investors in our conversations are really grappling with two things they may not have had to deal with for the last 10 years. You know, one is the potential for inflation to actually have to be priced into equities. Um, and I think there's a lot of confusion. And then it's a bond market that seems to be testing the Fed, which kind of scares people because, uh, you know, there's a difference between the bond market uh, feeling like they can move the Fed around versus the bond market maybe having a communication issue, which I think Mohammed was suggesting. And if the latter is the case, then I think stocks will be fine. But yes, it's been rocky and, you know, stocks are due for a correction. So so I, I don't think we should be surprised that it's been bumpy. And, and Tom, what do you make of the fact that the VIX is once again climbing again? I, I know when it pulled back significantly on a, on a single day, you thought that was a, a bullish uh, signal. Is this a bearish one? Uh, yeah, I mean, the VIX is a measure of markets, a future expected volatility. So in a way, I, I think it generates signal two ways. You know, one is I think for the most part, I think we should expect the VIX to, to average this year at much lower levels because it averaged almost 30 last year. I think it's going to average below 20 for the entire year. So I think moving below 20 will be bullish. But what we've had in the last couple of days is, is a spike in the VIX. And, and whenever the VIX spikes like this, um, we know that it triggers a lot of deleveraging. So I, I think in a, in a contrarian way, as ugly as today was, you have to remember this is a if someone is an equity investor you know with patient hands you know they should take advantage of days like this this is the days to be actually adding to their equity exposure on that note dan in this conversation you're the tech bull and we know how you feel about some of these names like apple of all of them that have gotten beaten up over the past few weeks on this rise in interest rates which one looks most attractive of the names you like yeah, I view this as a golden opportunity to own some of these cloud names like a DocuSign. You look at a Zscaler as well, and then ultimately Apple. And that's a $3 trillion mark cap as we look out into the rest of this year. We think tech stops are up another 30%. I view this as just a white knuckle period, which creates more opportunities given the $2 trillion of incremental spend on digital transformation. That's the key for us through the tree as we continue to pound the table here. What's your view on uh, Tesla from here, Dan? I mean, my view is we're going through, obviously, this risk-off period. You're seeing some of the you know, worries on EV, but it's a $5 trillion market. And I view that, that this is a company that's going to change automotive, going from 3% penetration to 10%. And I still think this is the trillion-dollar market cap. China started off rocky in January. We think that's going to be robust throughout the year. That's why an EV, that continues to be a bright green light with that as well as Tesla. So, so you're making the fundamental case and you've got the stories down pat for these stocks, Dan. Are you saying that the major liquidity environment and the super low interest rates don't have anything to do with the valuations and the names you're talking about? Oh, it definitely does. But when you look at some of these names down 30 percent, like a DocuSign, a Zscaler, for what's redefining digital transformation in terms of cloud, look at cybersecurity. I could tell you the conversations I've had over the last 48 hours, investors are waiting for this period and they're going to buy two hands full because to me, that's really what's going to lead tech higher. It's not just cloud cybersecurity, it's SANG names. And we view this as just the middle of what's going to be a tech bull cycle. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.